how do how do platforms? Like, that's a good question for you, David. How do platforms? Do you collaborate with these television networks, or is it kind of us against them? How, how does how does it work? Oh no, it's, it's kind of hugely collaborative. It's intended to be complementary. So um, you know, the stream we're taking the NFL from is the CBS TV stream. So you can watch it on TV or you can watch it on Twitter, either if you're not in front of a TV or if you want to just have that slightly uh, different experience with the, you know, tweets um, and the chance to kind of you know, have your say all in one place. So the way we're thinking of it is that Twitter brings a really unique live experience. Our content partners obviously bring uh, the content, but it's entirely uh, complementary. And what we've seen to date is that a number of people are literally using uh, the product at home But what it's also doing, importantly for the NFL, is bringing in people who couldn't otherwise have watched the match, who are having that experience on their mobile through Twitter. Um, And they're able, obviously, to then kind of grow their audience too and also grow it globally because it's in all markets, um, apart from Canada, oddly. Uh, yes, I saw there was some sort of uh, licensing yes. restrictions. Yes, so, yeah, not my area of expertise, but yes, there's, there's yeah. um, poor Canadians. Yes, but everything else is working out for Canada at the moment. Oh, so yeah. exactly. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Why should they have everything? Yes, yes. they're not going to have a Trump or a Hill Clinton, so they're okay there. Uh, I, I suppose from that point of view, we, we you know we, we touched on the NFL. Uh, in terms of other sporting events, particularly in the UK, obviously ones that spring to mind. Premier League football is is, is a good one, I suppose. Concerts. We talked jokingly about Eurovision Song Contest, but if you think about it, I, you know, a lot of my friends, or I don't know whether I should admit this or not, have, I've noticed on their Facebook feeds, not that I've been invited, do have uh, Eurovision parties. So in, in, in certain events like that, where people are actually at different venues, at different, on the go at different places, that, those kind of partnerships are something that I presume a, a platform like Twitter is, is looking to develop. Yes, I mean, we're very open-minded in terms of what um, content we develop. We're, we're thinking that anything where that live experience kind of comes to life on Twitter uh, can be enhanced by this experience. And typically that's the area of sports, because clearly that plays out live. Uh, politics, as we've seen yeah, with the debates, you know, um, and entertainment, so kind of you know, those live entertainment properties. So they're the areas that we're kind of focusing on. We just announced uh, the Melbourne Cup in Australia. It's going to be uh, live on the um, live video product. Um, so, yeah, we're kind of constantly thinking about how we can develop it but as I say it's all entirely complementary and the exciting thing is how much the kind of the, you know, the TV industry are embracing it too I mean if you look at Eurovision in particular which I always think we should <laughs> uh, it's, it's perceived very differently across Europe but in the UK it's always had a certain kind of uh, humour to it you know originally great Terry Wogan bringing that to life nowadays that's in, in the hands of the viewers and I think half of the experience for a lot of people nowadays is watching it with Twitter it is kind of you know people tweeting out maps of Europe with Australia plunked into the middle and, and things like that and there's always been something great and complimentary about it but maybe slightly disjointed that you have a couple of different screens and it doesn't work as well as it could. And I think the, the fantastic thing about the live product is it's, it's bringing those two things together. So actually, to prepare for this, I got up at two in the morning and watched some of the, <laughs> the, the debate last night, the presidential debate. And it really is a rich experience where, yeah, you can have kind of the full screen video on your phone or you, you turn it back to portrait and you see the tweets live and it's happening and you feel you can respond, engage, retweet those things without being pulled out of it. And I think that is kind of how it's really bringing a very natural thing together. And I guess things like Eurovision, but any number of things that people want to talk about are the most obvious place to kind of start. And I think um, the way that the specific Twitter platform has been built for live is very intuitive to exactly that point. So you can see that it lives really easily in an Apple TV space because it does get people to enjoy and enjoy, enjoy the conversation that's happening around that live space. But you also then have the ability to look at it on mobile, so it can be on the go or it can be appointment to view and sat down with a group of friends or family. So it does play into some of those hyper live moments like the debate, but also bigger events like Eurovision or, you know, we've learned from Amplify that some of the festivals that aren't streamed on TV are a really interesting opportunity um, for brands and for consumers to sit down and enjoy some of that content so how brilliant would it be if that was in longer form and allowed people to enjoy much more of that sort of live live entertainment I think what we find quite exciting from a user's perspective is we're not asking them to do anything they weren't already doing uh, which is have a great live uh, experience on Twitter and be in that moment all we've done is brought together the screen the tweets and the chance to have your say into one place. So the reaction from users has been incredibly positive because essentially we're just making that experience even better and not asking them to go out their way to change their behavior.